Hey, welcome to Van Space's beginner's tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create your van completely from start to finish in this one video. So stay tuned. All right. So when you first load into your scene, you're going to be able to need to move around in 3D space. So I'm going to show you how to use the camera. So with your mouse, you're going to right click and that's going to allow you to rotate around the van. You can also rotate using this rotate button on the track on the camera pad down here. And if you're using a trackpad, like on a laptop, you can hit the control button, left click, and then that will also allow you to orbit. If you hit the middle mouse button, that'll allow you to move the camera around the screen in a panning function. You can also do that with the pad down here with these arrow keys. You can also do W and D. And you can also hit the alt button if you're using a laptop trackpad. And then with that held down, you can hit left click and that'll also do the same thing. Zooming in and out is just using the scroll wheel or these buttons on the pad here. You can also hit WS. If you have a furniture piece selected, you can hit this focus on selected object button and that will take you to that object. And then when you rotate around, you'll be rotating around that object. All right, so I'm just gonna delete that and then go back to the default view by clicking on the home button and that resets our camera position. Okay, before getting started, we're gonna need a couple of settings checked. So in the settings tab on the top left, you're gonna go in there and then you're going to uh, set whether you're working in metric or imperial. I'm working in metric, so I'm going to apply centimeters, go out, and now I'm going to be working in centimeters. And then clicking on this van settings button, the van icon on the top left as well. I'm going to also set some things here. So here's where you're able to set which steering wheel side you, you want the, to be on your van, depending on which country you live in, as well as if you have a bulkhead or not, you can turn that on or off. Let's just jump straight into building. So clicking on the right hand side, there's a furniture tab. If we open that up, we can then start placing objects. So I'm going to search for a, a bed. So I'm going to look up a bed and I want a platform bed actually that has drawers in it and as well as a garage, as you see in the back here, so that we can have uh, storage behind it. So with the object selected after we place it, let's select it again. You can hit the space bar tab and that'll rotate it 90 degrees. Alternatively, you can rotate it using the but, uh, the furniture pad on the bottom right. And you can also use this rotate gizmo on the top bar and that'll rotate it as well. Control Z. Let's go back to the move gizmo. All right, so we wanna place it against this back wall so that the garage is in the right spot. So selecting the circle icon in the middle will allow you to drag the object around anywhere on the floor. And when you bring this hand up to touch an object, then it'll snap to that object. So if I touch the, the wall, the bed snaps to that wall. If I touch the back wall, it snaps to the back wall. So we want to snap to the back wall. All right, now let's on the, this button pad on the top left, it says TRBL and 2D. This is your camera position. So if you click on top, it'll take you to top, right, back, left, and then 2D takes you into the top in a uh, floor plan view. So that's easy for lining things up, as you can see, when you're in uh, 2D mode, you can easily line things up with edges. But in our case, we actually want the bed to be centered. So let's um, make this bed bigger so that it fills up this, this space of the van. So we can click on this scale object button on the top bar. And then now that brings up the scale gizmo where you can see its dimensions here. You can also see the bed's dimensions in this resize and rotate section, but I'm gonna scale this up so that it matches the floor width. Um, alternatively, Control Z that to undo. You can just keep stay in the move gizmo section and you can actually uh, set the, the, the width of this by just going into the resize and rotate area and typing in the dimension that you want. All right, so I just typed in the dimensions of this and now that's gonna fill up the space of the exterior or the floor space of the van. And then toggle back into 3D mode by going up here and clicking 3D. And now we can see we're back into 3D mode. All right, so we have our garage, we have our bed, and we have the drawers. To select objects within an object, you just have to select the object once and then click again on something that is inside of it. And then that selects the secondary object. So for these drawers, we can then pull them out if you wanna see how much storage we have in there. I'm gonna put them back in there for now and continue the build. So now I think it's a good time to paint this plywood a different color and the floor, put some flooring in. 
so that it, we can separate the walls and floor from the furniture. So let's go into the materials and color section here and let's get some wood. So I'm going to click on the wood panel and then let's find a nice flooring material. I think I'm going to go with, let's just go with this chevron pattern for the floor. And then for the walls, I'm going to put on this paneling here. So next we're going to need to add a kitchen. So let's go back into the furniture tab here and let's look for a kitchen cabinet. I'm going to look for a cabinet and don't worry about the colors. We can always paint those in later, but I'm just going to pick this style of cabinet I want, which is this simple white one here. When you place the object, remember to hover your cursor on the place that you want it to uh, snap to. So if we want it to snap to the wall, snap to the wall here, and then we're going to line it up with the other side. To get, it, to get it lined up perfectly is going to be important to use 2D mode. So let's go into the floor plan here. And then when you zoom in to this, you can also use the, the camera pad as well to navigate in 2D. You can zoom in and out as well in there. And then we can use these arrows to snap it to the, the wall and the, the other wall so that it's, uh, it's aligned completely to the edge of this van here. Okay. So remember, we can focus on this object if we want to get to it. So in the camera pad button, we can hit this focus button and then that brings us towards this cabinet. Now that we have our cabinet placed, I actually think it would be nicer to have the handle on the opposite side. So we're going to hit this mirror selected item button. So it'll mirror what you have selected. So now the handle's on the other side and then let's duplicate it. So we can hit this duplicate button and that's duplicated the object. So now when we drag it out, we have a second piece. So let's go into 2D mode again, and then we'll zoom in using the pad here, and then we can go to the uh, right spot with the camera pad as well. And then we can snap this one to the other cabinet, and then back to 3D mode. Now we have our cabinets placed. I, I think it would be better though if the handles were touching, so let's just mirror this one back by hitting the mirror button, and there now our door is on the other side. All right, so now we need to add a sink. I just looking up sink here and I'm going to grab this one and a half basin sink, place it in the scene and to get it up top on this countertop, we just need to grab the grab handle, hover it over the countertop and then it jumps on place, hit space bar to move it into the direction you want. And then we're going to go into 2D mode, zoom in, position the camera. Okay, now we're going to have it actually on this edge here. So we save space for whatever else we want to do on that side. And we'll actually push it all the way to the front here of this counter. And then let's go look at the right side view. So on this camera pad area, we click on the R button and that brings us to look at the right side. We can also use the camera controls here. And then we're just going to grab this green arrow and then you can slide your, your sync into place back to 3D mode. And now our sync is in. Now let's just place a faucet. I'm going to place this big faucet here again, just hovered over the counter space bar one, two, three times. Now it's facing the right direction. I'm going to go into 2d mode and then just place in it, position it over top of this sink here. There we go. Maybe, maybe put it a little closer 3d. How does that look? Focus on it with the focus button. And I think these are both a little bit too close to the wall. So I'm just going to, while this one's selected, I'm going to hit hold down shift, click on the sink. And now the faucet and the sink are selected. And then I can move them together with these arrow keys. So I'm going to pull them forward a little bit. All right, let's deselect. And finally, the only thing this kitchen is missing is an upper cabinet. So in the furniture tab, let's look for an upper cabinet. I'm going to grab this white one here. Space bar to rotate three times. So it's facing this direction. And then we're going to need to line it up on top of this cabinet, but on the ceiling here. So to position this upper cabinet on the ceiling, we're going to need to align it to the roof. So let's go into 2D mode, which is where we do all of our aligning. We're going to look at the back view so we can see the top of the ceiling here. And then we can drag the cabinet to, into place. So let's actually just zoom in so we can get a better view. And then we can line up the cabinet to the top of the ceiling. And then we also need to line the cabinet up to the back wall here, since there's a curvature to each fan. And then because we're working in 3D space, we actually need to line it up on three directions. We also need to line it up on the edge of this bulkhead here. 
So back into 2D, but we can do that from the top down view. So now when we zoomed in here, we can now just snap this to uh, the edge of the counter here. Okay, back to 3D mode. All right, so I want another upper cabinet, but before I do anything, I'm gonna just paint these because they're white and the background's white, so it's kind of hard to see what's going on. So I'm gonna go into the materials tab. I'm gonna grab a nice paint color here, let's see. Let's paint them something dark so it contrasts with the white wall. I'm gonna do this walnut wood. Let's see, paint the cabinet here. And then let's paint the upper cabinet as well. And I'm gonna paint the bed and the drawers to match. Okay, so now we have a walnut and I'm actually gonna paint, uh, have a different countertop. So I'm actually gonna do a, let's do a concrete counter. So it has a good contrast. And then let's actually paint the cutting boards to match the countertop. Okay. So there we have our new kitchen color. If we want another upper cabinet, we can either duplicate this one, slide it over like we did on the base. Let's delete that though because I actually want to have an open shelf instead of the same one duplicated. So let's go into furniture and let's pick something that has a shelf. So uh, space bar three times to rotate. Once you've added your shelf and rotated it, you'll notice that it doesn't match the height of the other cabinet. So I'll show you how to do that. So we have this function here called the toggle grid on the top bar. So if you turn that on, you can actually raise this grid height to different levels to work on. But an easy function is to just select an object you want to work based off of and then snap the grid to the bottom of the object. In this case, you can also snap to the top, but we want to align the shelf to the bottom of this shelf. So now when we grab our open shelf and then we grab the drag handle, now we're working on top of the grid. So as you can see, it's the same height now as this upper cabinet. So now we can snap this to the back wall and then we can snap this in place, uh, touching the other cabinet. And let's turn the grid off because we don't need it anymore. Okay, finally, let's fill in this missing gap here with a seating and an eating area. So I'm gonna look up uh, some kind of seating that we want. So I'm gonna go into this category section on the, on the furniture tab here, and let's go into the seating, and let's just find something that will fit nicely here. We can either just put in a pre-made dinette, but I think we can actually build our own. So I'm gonna add a, just a regular bench with drawers in it. So we have a bench and it also has some storage, um, but it doesn't fit the space. I'm gonna show you an accurate way to figure out how big this bench should be. So let's go into 2D mode in the floor plan, zoom in all the way. And now let's find the distance between the bed and this kitchen here. So first I'm just gonna like move this blanket out of the way. So select the bed once, select twice just the blanket, slide the blanket out of the way. And the reason I did that is just so I can see the, the edge here, the clean edge of the bed. So I can measure based off of that, not the blanket. Okay, so if you go up in here, there's a measuring tool you can click on, and then you can select the axis you wanna measure on. So if you click switch axis, we wanna measure the length here. So length is as in length of the van. So we're going to click on the point we wanna measure from, which is the edge of this cabinet. And then we're gonna to wanna to measure to the bed frame. All right, so then we just got to go back into the bench, go into the resize rotate, type in the dimensions that we measured, 128.72 into the width. And now it fits the space between the bed and the kitchen. Okay, so let's add a place to eat from now. I'm gonna actually add this rectangle table here and place it in front of the bench here. I think that's a good spot. And now let's just finish off this build by coloring everything how we want it to be colored and adding some accessories. So I'm gonna go and look up, let's gonna add a plant. So I'm gonna have this basil plant, I can just drag it on the kitchen counter here, maybe add a Swiss cheese plant. I think that looks nice, put it on the table. And let's see what else, maybe a fork. Okay, we got a fork. You can focus on items, remember, by clicking on this focus on selected button. So even if something's very small, you can easily jump to it by hitting that button. Uh, let's put a spoon next to it. And maybe let's add a cup of coffee as well. All right. So now they've got their little setup here. And let's just finish off by coloring some things. So let's look into all materials and just kind of get some inspiration here. So I'm going to actually 
make like a butcher block countertop here or kitchen kitchen table here. And let's see what else. Maybe let's change the blanket. Oh, we got to put the blanket back to position um, right here. And then let's go into the fabrics. And let's see. Let's find a good blanket material. That's a good quilt material. And we'll also make the pillows match. And then let's add this polka dot print to the, the table or the bench seat there. And actually, I think the bench is missing a pillow. So let's just add a pillow to the bench. Drag it on top, space bar. And let's like hit the scale button. If you click on, when you're in the scale gizmo, if you click on the center, you can scale the whole thing down at once instead of just one axis. And then the rotate gizmo to give it a little bit of a spin. And then let's just move that into place with the, the move gizmo. And then let's go back to the materials and pick something like a pop of color. Let's do this little zebra print pillow here. It will make all the, we'll make all the pillows zebra print. I think it looks good. Let's say we want to see how much storage we can fit in the back. Then of course you can go into the furniture tab. Let's just look at all items here. Okay. Let's add this generator to the back. We'll add some water jugs, jerry can, and you get the point. You can fill it up with all the stuff that you want to fill it up with maybe a cooler. All right, so that takes us to the end of the beginner's tutorial. We've gone from nothing to learning how to create an entire van build in this one video. There is more in-depth guides on the website if there's more that you want to learn, but this will be enough to get you started building what you have in your head. So that's all I have for you this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy Vanspace, and I will see you in the next video.